One purpose of a project that we like to call Berlin Psychoanalytic is to set psychoanalytic education free. Here I don't mean just to make it free of charge, but to liberate it from many constraints that usual psychoanalytic educations have. It's true there are many different models. Within the International Psychoanalytic Association there are three and then outside of it there are probably countless ones. But it seems to us that they all suffer from similar limitations. To begin with, Ada Kernberg famously compared psychoanalytic institutes with four different types of educational institutions. With universities, with artistic schools, with monasteries and with trade schools. So psychoanalytic training partly is like gaining knowledge and learning how to provide some new knowledge, to generate some new knowledge. Then partly it is about how to deal with intuitions, with invisible, with creative and so on. Partly it is about the trade. How you organize your practice, how you organize your sessions, how do the patients pay, how do you pay your taxes and so on. And partly it's like monasteries where doctrine is given from one generation to the next without real questioning. So Berlin Psychoanalytic is set, aimed at inspiring people interested in psychoanalysis to doubt everything, to ask questions, to never simply trust what is written or what is told. Famously, every psychoanalytic paper begins in the same way. Whatever the topic the author is addressing is, the author will say, as Freud wrote in 19 a uh, certain year, and then continue discussing Freud's opinion, and then hopefully on page six the author will try to say something new. It is our belief that this is a completely wrong approach, that generations of psychoanalysts have suffered from being asked to follow a doctrine instead of to do their own research and doubt what is going on until they find a new answer. How is this obvious? My favorite example is the idea Freud expressed in 1920 in his essay, a short book, Beyond the Pleasure Principle, where he wrote about the death drive. And the death drive is Freud's attempt to say something about death and then how you can recognize it in the universe, in biology, in other species, in humans, in our dreams, in our symptoms, and so on and so on. For several decades, more or less no one asked, how did he know? How can a human know anything about death? Is it possible for mortals to be able to discuss death? No one asked whether what is called death drive really works as a drive. Does it have the same structure as other drives? Freud hypothesized, and so on and so on. But with discussing death, Freud going beyond, going into the metaphysical, structured psychoanalysis as a sort of a religious movement. So we have a language of our own that many other professionals do not understand at all. We have ceremonies where you become a candidate and then you become a member and then you become a training analyst. We have a prophet whose name was Sigmund Freud, who wrote many books that we quote again and again. And hopefully this will change into psychoanalysis becoming more of a scientific discipline, where knowledge will be discussed and shared and doubted in universities, and new knowledge will be generated based on research studies every one of us does. Science develops very slowly in very small steps in acquiring bits and bits of understanding of the external or the internal world. The basic problem with psychoanalysis could be that it's developed too rapidly, that Freud wanted within a couple of decades to explain everything. 
societies, wars, culture, biology, uh, universe, history, ethnology, primates, everything. That simply is not possible for any human. And we need to continue slowly gathering bits of data without narcissism, without expecting to be too smart, if we are going to be a respectable scientific discipline, if we want to be able to say that we know what we are doing and that we know how to help other people. In the context of this, Berlin Psychoanalytic will hopefully, over time, provide more and more lectures that will be based on this approach. How to think about psychoanalytic topics, but not in doctrinary way, but how to doubt and look at problems from different perspectives. We hope that might bring a modicum of hope for a brighter future of psychoanalysis.